Today we are working on a Mini Cooper. We're working on a 2005. It's an MK1. There are multiple versions of this Mini Cooper and the battery is in a bunch of different places. On an MK1, the battery's up here. MK2, the battery's over, over there. The MK1 Cooper S, the battery is in the trunk. This one, today we're putting a thermostat on it. And what's fun about this is you got to take the battery off and you got to take the air cleaner off just to get down here because the thermostat is right there. When we install this, we're going to make sure that, and this is the way it came in the box, you want to make sure that your weep hole on your thermostat is at the top. They already had it in there um, in the seal. And also you'll see that the spring goes toward the engine. And we're going to be looking up the torques on this. The torques are 108 inch pounds to fasten this to the to the head. Before we do this, I mean, I realized I had an antifreeze leak and it started to overheat. But there is a okay right here is where you would you would unscrew this, let the air out of this when you fill it back up. I wanted to make sure that wasn't leaking. If that was leaking, it would have been a much easier fix. But it's definitely the thermostat housing leaking um, this is a 2005 has uh only 16,000 miles on it so the fact that i mean it was only driven a thousand miles a year or whatever 18 year old car and it's got a, a leak in the thermostat so let's get busy we'll take off this stuff um let's see this right here just comes up move the seal back And on these, you got to disconnect this wiring harness. This is your computer right here. You want to disconnect your positive terminal first. So that. And make sure you don't touch, obviously, anything to ground here. Now, you can put a battery tender on these things. And what that will do is it will hold your memory for your power windows, for your radio. But, I mean, that can all be reset. And also, this one is a convertible, so there may be something that needs to be reset on the convertible. This whole box is going to have to come out of here, so. Yeehaw. Got these bolts down here that we need to take out. Okay, you're going to push right here. That's got to be out of the way. And then you got to push this one out of the way. So that's got to go that way to unlock the computer. So when, when you're pushing that back, those two tabs back, pull up slightly on the computer and it'll come out. Now in order to get this plug off of here, this has got to come this is going to come clear out so that it unlocks. So there we go. See that groove right there? Now that's off. Now you got to do the back one. Looking for that groove. Going to be groovy. There we go. That's all unplugged. I'm going to take the computer out. 
So if you need to take the computer out, this is the way you do it. There's another bolt right here that we need to take out to get the tray out. So four bolts all together. Time for a magnet. That goes behind there. And this holds all the wires, so it's easier just to get this out of the way. There we go. And they've got zippy ties down here. But we're not concerned about that. We're concerned about that thermostat right there. Looks like we have mice and mud dubbers after sitting for 10 years. And if you were gonna do the air conditioning, air conditioning, Right back here on this firewall, if you chase that line right there, that's your that's your expansion valve right there. You would need to change that if you want if you if that got stuck open. And this one actually is stuck open, so I'm gonna have to replace that. Now we gotta move the air cleaner. These two screws right here. Check the air filter while we're in here. Probably was never changed. Nope, that's dirty. Now we're gonna remove the lower part of the air cleaner. Oh, zippy tie. Zippy tie, yay. So we are going to pinch that right there with needle nose and get that to come off without breaking it. So that's what that looks like. That's why it worked with the needle nose. So this pipe right here goes in that hole, so you've got to work this back toward the transmission, and then transmission gets in, well, the engine mount gets in the way. More mud daubers. So now we can get to the thermostat and all of its glorious bolts, all three of them. The sensor had been leaking, the temperature sensor. It would have been that right there that I needed to disconnect and replace. Well, you get this sensor wire off of here. Let's gently work this back. Then you're gonna push on this black tab right here because it's freed up now. And I'm gonna get my fat fingers in here. I was hoping you guys could see this, but we're gonna push on this tab now and just work this off. There we go. Try to do that without breaking it. And we need to really drain the antifreeze in this first, but there's a plate under here you gotta take off and I don't know, just too lazy. So I think I'm just gonna disconnect me a hose. They got a bunch of real expensive tools and stuff that you can use on these. I found my bent nose, my bent needle nose pliers are pretty handy. So I was able to work this back to here. I'm gonna let it go now. I can use any one of these 
shoulders or screws or whatever to kind of push this back. It's like a Chinese finger trap. To get to the bottom bolt down here, there's a wiring harness clip. Goes on the metal bypass hose from the firewall. So you gotta disconnect that to get to that bottom bolt down there. If you wanted to take this off, you'd have to remove the old clamp and replace it with the screw on clamp because it's got one here and it's got one here. I'm not gonna do that because I, I don't know. I'm just gonna work around it. Okay, I'm looking at this a little bit more. It looks like that temperature sensor is what's leaking. The reason I say that is because that's where all the water is coming from. It's hitting on that hose right there. But since I'm in here, I'm going to replace. And you see all the blue oxidation on that. So I'm going to replace that sensor. Lifetime warranty, AutoZone. $28, I think. So I'm going to replace that. You'll notice it's leaking right there on that pipe. Yeah, that pipe's got a hole in it. Hopefully that's not the case. But while I'm in here, I'm going to change this thermostat also. We'll have to remove this clamp. That clamp right there. Remove all the housing bolts. There's three of them. So this is a 19 millimeter. Catch it out in my pan. Take this thermostat off of here. It's funny, the dealership just automatically said, oh, it's the thermostat. But I'm sure the thermostat leaks a lot. But that sensor is definitely bad. All right, so you'll notice that the spring is toward the middle. And they even had the thing up, so that's important. So we've gotten the thermostat removed, the housing removed. Now we need to move on to installing everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a razor blade, clean off this, this end of the head where the gasket was, hopefully, so that we don't get a, a leak when we reinstall everything. So I'm going to do another video and go watch my other video on putting it all back together.